Your voice, your opinion, your community. Fact TV, free speech, protected. I'm Robert McBride, and this is Everyday People, a program in which we investigate the lives of people making a difference in our community. Hey, good morning. This is Robert McBride with another episode of Everyday People, interviewing people in our community making a difference. And on today's show, we have a guest that has come back to us, Maria Basescu from Putney. Uh, formerly, about a year, a little over a year ago, we did an interview when she was working with Next Stage, an incredible cultural organization in Putney. And now she's kind of shifted over to another organization in Putney, the Yellow Barn Music Center Festival, whatever it's called. And she took the position there as the managing director. And so we welcome you to the show. Thank you. And Good I think here. you just, it's like who, what, when, where. Like, tell us a little, a little bit about Yellow Barn. Sure. And, uh, the, and your transition from one very important cultural organization to another really one in our region. <clears throat> Great. Thank you. Happy to be here. Um, it's a pretty organic transition actually so you're right I was with next stage uh, for six years a little over six wow. years I was executive director the first executive director for next stage I'd been on the board there and then I became the executive director in 2013 and we have been working with yellow barn because through throughout that time because Yellow Barn, and I, I appreciate you are not being sure what to call it. Is it a festival? Is it, a, uh, is it just Yellow Barn? Because Yellow Barn is, in fact, best known for being a music festival, I think, right. because they have this summer festival, which right. I'll talk about. Uh, yet it does many other things, including a year-round artist residency oh. program, and that's the context in which Next Stage and Yellow Barn have worked together most closely. So Yellow Barn, for its summer festival performances, has been using the Big Barn concert venue, which is also mm -hmm. a beautiful facility in downtown Putney. Uh, but for non-summer public performances, all of those have happened at Next Stage. Ah, okay. So, and that's continuing to happen. In fact, we have two coming up this month. Um, on February 20th and February 23rd. I'll give you a little more information okay, about those. Yeah, yeah. But um, anyway, I was at Next Stage honestly a little longer than I expected to mm -hmm. be. It, you know, six years <clears throat> was um, a good long run, mm -hmm. and there are wonderful things going on with that organization, and I absolutely loved it and continue to love it. I think it's a vital uh, enterprise in Putney. And so I'm excited to be able to keep working with them. But the opportunity arose with Yellow Barn because there are a lot of exciting developments happening there. And uh, frankly, a characteristic about Next Stage that I have very much valued is it's not driven by one artistic mission. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's not a, a puppet festival like Sandglass Theater mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or youth theater mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. NEYT um, or chamber music mm -hmm. like Yellow Barn. It's sort of, it partners with lots of organizations mm -hmm. and embraces all of that. And uh, I felt ready to sort of put my shoulder to the wheel of yeah. a specific artistic vision and one that I find very very compelling mm -hmm. and, and innovative, yeah. that being Yellow yeah. Barn. Yeah. yeah, so to back up, like, how long has Yellow Barn been in existence? 50 years. Wow. So in 1969, okay. this uh, wonderful musician, David Wells, okay. yep. uh, was teaching at New England Conservatory, okay. and he had a house in Putney uh, with his a wife, also a musician, mm -hmm. Janet Wells. And so they started by inviting musical students from from New England from yes New England Conservatory to mm -hmm. come up for the summer live together in somewhat intimate quarters 
um, have more connection and contact and do sort of living together, mm -hmm. rehearsing together, and really digging more deeply mm -hmm. into the music. And that's the foundation of Yellow Bond, wow. 1969. Yeah. And when did, uh, do you know, I mean, not that you would know this for sure, but uh, the Marlboro Music Festival, when did that start up? Is that more than 50 years? Is it about the same time? Boy, do you, know? you know, I don't have yeah. the original yeah. date. Uh, I do know that it's just one more testament to the richness of this community, mm -hmm. and we know it in so many different ways, right. but that, that this greater region can support two mm -hmm. absolutely fantastic international uh, music festivals as they do. Right. There are differences between the two festivals, mm -hmm. Marlboro and Yellow Barn, although many musicians uh, alternate, mm -hmm. have, have attended both, mm -hmm. and there's a lot that they share. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I would say Yellow Barn, while it does a lot of traditional classical music mm -hmm. and certainly presents many classical music composers in common with Marlboro, Yellow Barn is known for um, its innovation. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of um, sort of new music and what they call new music and um, crossover with jazz mm -hmm. and uh, or crossover rather with jazz and um, and of course other programmatic aspects like the year-round ar artist residency right. the young artist program mm -hmm. which is uh, in June so the main festival happens in right July, that's what I'm gonna ask you from July through through the first week of August okay oh. and so what happens in the festival is Musicians from all over the world come, and this happens on the Greenwood School campus. Mm -hmm. So all 35 or so um, participants, um, faculty and students, although there is not a sharp distinction made there because there's mm -hmm. a very egalitarian, mm -hmm. inclusive approach that Yellow Barn has. But these musicians live together and work very, very hard. Yellow Barn is known for being one of the hardest festivals to get into and one of the hardest working festivals once wow. you are <laughs> in, <laughs> uh, which is uh, absolutely thrilling to those participants involved. But so they live on the Greenwood School campus, rehearse and work um, intensively, and then there are about 20 public performances that happen at the big barn. Mm -hmm. There are also talks in the public library. There are master classes, which is one of my absolutely favorite mm. things because it's uh, so engaging in the process mm -hmm. and, and pretty thrilling to see. And there are always talkbacks, mm -hmm. discussions after each concert because, mm -hmm. again, the purpose of the festival is not performance. Performance is sort of a shared aspect. Mm -hmm. But the purpose is really the work and the engagement. Mm -hmm. um, so the Young Artists Program is in June, and that is for 13 to 20-year-olds from all over the world. Mm. And for both of these events, um, Seth Knopf, who's the artistic director, has been for 20 years, um, who is a pianist himself and has been with the Peabody Trio, very highly esteemed uh, chamber music trio, and he teaches at the Peabody Conservatory mm -hmm. in Baltimore mm -hmm. also. Uh, he conducts about 550 auditions every year oh, all over the world. Wow. Uh, and he's in the process of that as we speak. And so an amazing level of musicians audition for, for this opportunity. So that includes the Young Artist Program, and I had the privilege, though I only started working with them in the fall, I attended many events in the summer, and I, just as a resident of actually Westminster West, right. um, <clears throat> I had attended Yellow Barn events prior to that. And the Young Artist Program is just absolutely thrilling. You have these super talented uh, and, and in their way accomplished young musicians coming together to live together many of them coming to this country for the first time, and beautiful Vermont is what they see, and I mean, right. we're sold, we right. live here. Yep, absolutely. Uh, but then they work extremely hard, and um, I have to say one of my favorite Yellow Barn moments is 
at the conclusion of a young artist program performance where you've seen this intensity of their their effort and their talent and they're working together and and a degree of seriousness and then when they complete the concert and they stand up to the applause you see these grins yeah. of you know teenagers yeah yeah uh, yeah but it's joyful. Oh, it's that, really joyful. It's fantastic. So why don't we the, the, mm -hmm. just right now? So why don't you give the um, the web page for okay. Yellow Barn? And I imagine tickets for the summer season are already online or not. Uh, they're about to be online. Okay. okay. Um, but right. but I'm happy cool. to say uh, because th so this first this it's yellowbarn.org. Okay. That's the website. You can get lots of information there about the summer program and the residencies. Okay with a great commitment to trying to bring more people into experience Yellow Barn uh, and, and share this wonderful organization and these wonderful concerts. The residency concerts are free. Okay. So this, this year we're wow. making every effort to, to do cool. that. So here's a great example. Okay. So this is coming up on February 20th. I say it's a great example because this concert is called the Music Alliance Project, okay. and it's all about building the interrelationship, the connection, celebrating the connection between classical and jazz music. A lot of what we try to do with Yellow Barn is demystify what is classical music or chamber music and uh, share how innovative and uh, open and engaging it truly is. So I'm excited about this. Um, classical and jazz collaboratively. Okay. So that's the 23rd, the 20th. Which that's at the, next stage at 730. It's a Thursday. Yep, yep. that's a Thursday. Okay. And then right after that on its heels is this wonderful concert which which is a violin and piano called duoing. And so that's Sunday, the 23rd at 7.30. This is a different kind of integration because it it's includes works from more traditional composers and com contemporary composers. Mm -hmm. So again, nothing at Yellow Barn is something you can predict. Mm -hmm. I will say the experience of going to a Yellow Barn event will be guaranteed to enlighten you in some way. Right. Um, so people are welcome to come to those concerts. Right. Um, a couple other things to say, as I've been learning more about what is this organization, and speaking of demystifying, Yellow Barn also has, a couple years ago, they hired an architect to design, they, they bought a U-Haul truck, 17-foot U-Haul truck, right, right. and the architect designed basically the state-of-the-art traveling stage. Whoa. So you can drive this truck around, and I've done it. It's <laughs> quite an experience. And then there is a pretty ingenious, quick way to open up the back doors, and, and this, is, this happens, these are free concerts with Yellow Barn musicians, they, they happen in parks, they happen in schools, they happen in cor at correctional facilities. Mm -hmm. The idea is open this up and invite people into the experience, not because they go into a traditional right. concert hall, which frankly might be intimidating mm -hmm. to many people, sure. or they would just think, that's not for me. But Music Hall, H-A-U-L, mm -hmm. is all about Great. really expanding access to what is this right. chamber music right. experience. And is this, um, is this done during the summer season or all year round it's planned out or what? Well, having just gotten to a jam having to move that truck in the winter, I'll right. tell you, we're not doing it in the winter okay. in New England. Okay. Um, but so far there have been spring and fall um, appearances mm -hmm. in Boston and New York okay. and Baltimore. Mm -hmm. um, part of what I'm looking forward to doing is taking that further and wider, actually taking Music Hall nationally. Mm -hmm. um, we plan to go to New Orleans mm -hmm. in the fall, mm -hmm. um, but it is weather dependent. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you want to be in warmer right, right. places where audiences. Right. Right. Um, and, and some of the most exciting music hall experiences have been on the street 
in a place where people walking by, it's the last thing they expected to encounter, and they get extremely drawn in yeah. and, and excited by it. So, so let me ask you though, yeah. so how have you, where is on your radar on screen rural Vermont in experiencing some of these music halls? Yeah, I definitely, uh, good point, because yeah. we certainly don't want to skip over that. Um, it, it's very high on the list because, uh, you know, there are many places, and, and frankly, this is on my mind a lot, has been on my mind as part of Next Stage, that there's so much to discover about people, even in Putney, mm -hmm. who may not have traditionally accessed cultural events, mm -hmm. and the importance of reaching into the community right. and not sitting back and waiting for people to come to you right. is is so right. important to, to, to realizing the way that cultural events can bring communities together. Mm -hmm. And we need that more mm -hmm. than ever. Yeah. So absolutely, the, we are working on plans to bring Music Hall to every corner of rural right. Vermont right. Um, as well. Yeah, because it's also kind of exciting because you, you know, we all know, you never know where the switch goes off for somebody when they see something that they might not have experienced it. You know, and it could be like, this you know, music hall truck showed up in the middle of town and some kid got turned on and boom, you know, yep. it happens. And yep. that's kind of what's kind of very exciting also. And I think a lot of what we talk about in Vermont is, you know, the need to try to bring in tourism and stuff to a degree. But I like to frame the conversation more about serving, you know, the residents of a community as well as sharing things with visitors. Right. And, you know, because... Um, you know, we don't want to set up an antagonism around something. And we want people to come and share our community, but we, I always try to, you know, share things with my community first thing, you know, you're invited to this, you can come to this, this yep. is something that's available. Right. And um, not just, oh, we're bringing these people in. And I think sometimes when people talk about tourism, they just think of it as some tidal wave they need, but right. don't really look at what's around them and how that may be. Yeah. Off-putting. <laughs> uh, no, I, I couldn't agree more. And actually, that, that um, cues me up to share something. Okay. A new, another development yeah, okay. that we're so cool. excited about. Yeah. So you asked me about the history of Yellow Barn. Yeah. When did it start and where? So Yellow Barn itself is named for that property I mentioned that David and Janet Wells bought and where they had the original events. So... It, which is a yellow barn. Their house is yellow, and there's an adjacent uh, barn, yeah. it, which is where the original Yellow Barn concerts actually happened. So Yellow Barn today is in the process of buying that property, which is oh. right downtown Main Street yeah. in Putney. And David and Janet Wells um, have passed away now. So Yellow Barn is committed to restoring that property oh. to its original intended mm -hmm. purpose. Um, to that end, we've already received a grant from the Preservation Trust of Vermont Great. to begin the restoration process. It was lived in up until last year, so it's a very, it's not that it's so antiquated mm -hmm. that it isn't immediately useful, but there are things that we need to do sure. to basically have that be a year-round home for Yellow Barn in terms of the administrative offices being located there, uh, ultimately having the artists who are here in residence living there together, mm. sharing the kitchen. Mm -hmm. They're y using the barn to bring the community in to have workshops or performance events that happen there, and really to be the basis for uh, the what we're calling the Center for Music and Social Dialogue. Mm. <clears throat> which will really, in a number of different ways, be all about integrating the residencies and the artists who come more deeply into the local community and inviting people into that experience. So we're very excited about it, and we think that, you know, even on the very informal level of when we have artists come to town, whether for the residencies mm -hmm. or the summer festivals, just the interaction they have when they go to the general store mm -hmm. or they go to the library or they go to area establishments mm -hmm. or they're getting gas. Mm -hmm. 
there's a wonderful inner relationship yeah. that oh, is yeah. developing that you know even in a short period of time in a week mm -hmm. where people feel the visitors feel part of a community or they're learning something about this rural community mm -hmm. and our local community is getting a great way to experience yeah. them so we're excited about it it's all about revitalizing downtown mm -hmm. it's a commitment to main street presence mm -hmm. it's a uh, a commitment to really being to deepening the partnership that Yellow Barn has in the community yeah. with with businesses, but with individuals, yeah. and it's making it really integrated at a two-way level. No, no, that's incredible. That's incredible. Yeah. So the um, and I know I've been sort of given the high sign, so we only have a few more minutes. Okay. But um, the capacity in the in the current performance space venue versus the old barn, you'd be what what kind of yeah. audience capacity is there. I mean, it, it, it's 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 different in a couple of ways. Okay. So the current summer festival, um, it, it seats about 175, mm -hmm. and it's you know closer to half that in the barn. But there are many other differences in terms of um, acoustics and um, space and instrumentation. Yellow Barn has a lot of pianos. It now includes percussion, which are which can take up a huge amount of space. Sure. So in, in a performance um, context, the barn is much more limited mm -hmm. than the, the big barn performance space that we've been using. So they're not really comparable mm -hmm. in that way, but there is a wonderful quality and an intimacy, and it's a perfect space for a more informal audience experience. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think there'll be a wonderful compliment right. to have both spaces. Cool. Oh, that's great. Man. Yeah. Um, so why don't you give us the website again okay. <coughs> and two, and those two quick upcoming dates, the Thursday and the following Sunday. Right. And then we'll probably be wrapping the show up. Okay. That went fast. Yep. So I it's yellowbarn.org mm -hmm. and all kinds of information, background, upcoming events, um, biographies of people involved, musicians, etc. All kinds of good information there. Mm -hmm. The two events that are coming up are most immediately both in February, yep. Thursday, February 20th, yep. and Sunday, February 23rd, both at wonderful Next Stage in downtown Putney, across from the general store, both at 7.30 p.m. There is no charge for these events, and there will be a very engaging discussion to which all are invited following oh, each fantastic. one, which will be facilitated by Artistic direct Director Seth Mill. Fantastic. Well, thank you. This is great. Yeah. This is great. And we'll have to have you back as the season gets into more full swing and stuff, too, for some updates and everything. That'd Love be great. to come back. Thanks great. for everything you do to share all <laughs> this. Here we are. That's where we're here. Yeah. We love Burrow, Vermont. Anyway, so uh, once again, Robert, um, this is Robert McBride, and I like to thank Fact TV for being such a great resource for us to be able to host programming like this and keep information about our communities out there to you all. And I'd also like to thank the Vermont Arts Council, the National Endowment for the Arts, Chroma Technology, and the Wyndham Foundation for helping to keep RAMP moving along with all of its different pursuits in community development. So until next time, this is Robert McBride and Maria Vesescu from Yellow Barn, and see you on the square. Thank you.